Astigmatismo is uh, a stop motion short film about the feeling of being lost and about not being able to see things clearly. So this feeling is created through an effect of extreme blur. Most part of the image is completely blurry and only a tiny space is in focus. And this space moves back and forth synchronized with the sounds and the music. The film was made in a quite unconventional way because I wanted to have this feeling of being lost. I wanted this feeling to drive the creative process. Basically, I wanted to get lost myself and uh, I wanted everybody who was involved in the production of the film to feel lost. So what I did is I asked for people to collaborate in the project a musician, sound designer, character designer and uh, background designer who each will work separate from each other without knowing who are the other people in the team. They wouldn't know how the work they are creating for the film will uh, be put together with the work of everybody else and they were not allowed to be in contact between them. So everybody was working isolated and they didn't know exactly what was going to happen in the film. They had an, an overall idea of what it was about, but nobody knew, not even me, what was going to be happening in the screen. Basically, when I received uh, all these separated pieces of content, I had to put together a film with this, or like, a, like a puzzle. So. The film was created sort of by free association between all these separated elements. Uh, by putting these pieces together, I was allowed to surprise myself and come uh, with ideas that I wouldn't have come with otherwise. I could work this way because I knew the work of these people very well. Because I truly believe that if you want to make things uh, that are different, you have to make them differently. For me, the film is not only about what the final film is. I will spend three years making this. I want this to be interesting to make. Because I asked to do everything before the film was made, I also asked for a track of sound effects that will be the sound effects of the movie. But Pierre, my sound designer, didn't know what will be happening in the screen. I asked him to do two minute track of sound effects and I will put the image to that track of sound effects. First, I, I asked him for different dynamics of sounds. I asked him for a space transition and I asked for a uh, track of sound effects that you could listen to and was interesting to listen to by its own. So this is very, very unconventional way of working, especially for a sound designer. When I first received the, the different parts of the film, I started by working on the sound. And first thing I did was to build, a, make a, a scheme of what the focus will be doing before I had any animation. I wanted to know where will be the focus. The camera stand has five double levels of glass. So each level the glass above is movable and the glass below is fixed. The glass above is where the animated paint will go and the glass which is below is where the paper marionettes will go. The camera is hanging at 2.70 meters high and these levels have different separation between each other because the further away you make your focus point the bigger is the depth of field. So the levels that are in the back has to be more separated from each other than the levels that are closer to the camera. 
to make this focus move fluidly back and forth I need an illusion of continuous space I couldn't just have different layers which are separated from each other so I, I need to come up with a, a way of having a continuous three-dimensional three space I, I had no idea how I'll do it before I started shooting so this was like more than two years of not knowing how you will do something that is essential for the film to achieve this effect of uh, perspective and uh, continuous space between each level of glass there's a wire structure with a piece of paper uh, that basically makes the ground or the floor of the scene uh, this piece of paper is detachable for me to be able to put the hands and animate and then put back together so this this structure of paper and wire is held by two magnets and attached to the same place with a couple of snap fasteners to reinforce uh, this effect of perspective some elements of the background have volume which are simply pieces of paper that are folded in different angles I'm using the cheapest reflex camera there is with one of the most expensive lenses there are The characters are mainly cut out based on Gina's designs but they have to be made at different sizes and articulated so I could animate them. Uh, if they turn around or if they change from one level to another, several copies of these characters have to be made because they are painted in black from behind to avoid casting reflections in the glasses that are below. And the two main characters are a mix of uh, cutout animation and paint on glass. The limbs are made in paper, but there is no, no body. The body is animated in liquid paint on the glass that is above. Her background designs uh, have to be break down in several levels to separate each element depending on, on which level of the structure it will be represented. Of course there are differences, I try to respect as much as possible, but the two main characters have evolved obviously because I've been drawing them and they are not exactly what she had made, it's more of a mix of her designs and my way of drawing. Instead of um, building all the characters and all the backgrounds first and then uh, shooting, so I was building the first uh, 30 seconds of film, then I shoot those, those 30 seconds, then I build the next 30 seconds of film and I shoot again. I wanted to work this way to avoid getting uh, tired of doing the same thing because the animation process was very long and you're sitting here in the dark uh, the whole day moving tiny pieces of paper so 
to be as fresh as possible, I wanted to change activities as often as possible. So even if this makes the shooting process longer, it makes it better. It helps me uh, come with fresh energy, new energy to the shooting. The film is animated at 25 images per second. Uh, I really want this effect of uh, hypnotizing the viewer and I, knew, I know how much it helps when you see very, very fluid animation. It's something that is very attractive, even, even if it's not very spectacular animation in itself. I was using the, uh, the computer animatic as a reference to animate because this is a rhythm-based film. I needed the rhythm to be very good. So I couldn't risk to just uh, shoot my film in stop motion and hope it will be good uh, rhythmically. I am not that good as an animator. So I was relying on uh, my computer version to know that the pacing of the film was, was right. First, I wanted the viewer to enjoy the feeling of being lost. I wanted him to enjoy not knowing where they are, what they're looking at, uh, what is going on. I wanted that feeling to be pleasurable. The, sec the second thing I wanted to do was uh, to make it very hypnotic. I wanted you to feel hypnotized and not being able to look away from the screen. And the third thing I wanted to do is to make it worth watching several times, as many times as possible. So that's the reason why the film is packed with content. There are lots of details, lots of things that happen very fast, and uh, it's impossible to see everything in the first time. I was hoping people will want to watch it again and will, have, will discover little new things and there are tiny little stories and little details that are hidden here and there. And every time they watch it, they will discover something new. Dale.